brought me on nicely to the next topic, really, which is Liverpool, who, after their 3-1 win against West Ham, which was a really impressive performance again in a season that's been I mean, full of them, really. They're unbeaten. I think they've only dropped two points and they sit second behind Manchester City, which is you know not unfamiliar territory for them in the grand scheme of the Premier League, especially in the last sort of five years. But in the last couple of years, they've not really been in contention for the title by any means. Now, I'm not saying Liverpool are up there in a title race, but I want to ask the question as to whether that's the way Liverpool will be looking this season, whether they're looking to kind of push to, again, try and get to the summit. Have they got a team capable of doing that? Because they've brought in the midfield that's completely changed the way they play. They needed that refresh after last season and the season before where it just looked very lethargic, didn't it, in the middle of the park? But I think in this game in particular, it's the best I've seen Alexis McAllister play since he joined the club. I thought he played really well and I think he struggled to find any kind of form and momentum so far. But this seemed to be his turning point. And a 3-1 win against West Ham is not an easy result at the minute. They're doing okay too. So what did you make of Liverpool and and what's your expectations for, for them this season, do you think, after, what, six games in? Yeah, it was a potential banana skin, wasn't it, this game? You know, West Ham obviously have had a really good start to the season. Um, you know, they've brought in some really good players themselves. And uh, Liverpool, obviously, are learning this new way of operating with the players they've brought into midfield. We've already mentioned over the past weeks with Sir Bosley, um, his introduction to the team. He's had a really good start, McAllister. And all of a sudden, actually, Liverpool have found a way of rebuilding their midfield in a very short space of time. It's actually coming together quite nicely at the right time. And... Um, definitely they should be looking with the start they've had to the season as well they should be looking to to obviously get into, back into the Champions League I think it's a bit too early to say whether they can challenge for the title mm. um, I think what they do have going for them is that their attack I think they're all firing on cylinders it feels like they're yeah. all contributing obviously Jota got on the score sheet today Nunez is he looks like he's kind of acclimatising a little bit better to the Premier League than, than last season. It looks like he's he's obviously making his mark and getting on the score sheet on a few occasions this season already. Um, so it's definitely positive. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see if they can carry on this momentum. I think the only thing I can question is at the times, defensively, they come apart. And I just feel as though that there's still that question mark there whether whether teams can obviously get at them. I think they can. I don't. I, I still feel like they're probably a few levels off of Man City, which you know, let's be honest, there are a lot yeah. of a lot of teams in this league are. But I feel like Arsenal are a better team than than Liverpool at the moment. Um, the ironic thing is that Liverpool probably have what Arsenal don't is that is people the players who can put the ball into the back of their net. Um, and it's something that I've not struggled to do really over the last few years. So it's a good result for them. Well, so far in the six games of uh, the Premier League so far, they've only conceded five goals. So defensively, they, they they look pretty solid. I mean, Man City, I think, for context, have let in three. So, you know, they've only drawn the one game out of the six and won the rest. So it's a really impressive start to the season. Their run of games coming up will be the test for them, really. And I think they haven't really been tested a huge amount. I think they've got Tottenham, Brighton and Everton coming up as their next three Premier League fixtures. So how they come out of those three will be a better kind of indicator of of whether they're actually capable of staying in the top two even, let alone challenging for the title. But you're right, I think the midfield is a lot more energetic now. Like They were lacking so much energy and dynamism over the last couple of years. But Zoboslai is just really <laughs> tricky player, isn't he? And I think this is the best game I've seen Diogo Jota play for a while as well. He looks like a real threat. And we say their midfield has been transformed, but their forward line as well, with Nunes now looking like the player we thought he might be. Salah's still producing the same kind of goals that he he used to at his, at his peak. So going forward, I don't think they'll struggle. It is just whether they, when they get de- uh, tested defensive that they can hold firm because we've seen without their front uh, their first choice defensive partnership of, of Van Dijk and um, Canate. It's not really much depth for the defence, is there? That's where I think they'll probably struggle. Yeah, and obviously we saw that in the game against Newcastle, obviously with the Van Dijk red card. You know, they're, they're only kind of a centre-back away from kind of being a little bit exposed in that area, really. Um, so it's going to be important for them to, to stay fit, especially the centre-backs. I think it's, a bit, it's really strange, isn't it? How mm. we mention about Liverpool 
really being thin around the midfield, midfield area is arguably probably one of the, the better areas on the pitch now. Um, and they've bought, you know, they've recruited really smartly actually over the summer. I know they got a lot of stick up for pursuing Drew Bellingham for such a long time, it felt like, but mm. in actual fact, it's probably worked out better that they've managed to get McAllister and, and Sir Bosley and, and um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting few weeks to see if they can obviously improve on this start. And like you mentioned, they've got some tricky fixtures. So if they can navigate mm-hmm. their way through that, and there's no reason why they can't look ahead and you know just look on to bigger things, obviously potentially mount a, ch- a title challenge. I reckon that they'll probably look at the Europa League as a real distraction now, and probably start resting players for that because. They can, and I think they'll probably try and prioritise the Premier League and getting back to where they feel they'll probably belong, which is you know challenging for the title. And uh, anything that jeopardises that, I think Jurgen Klopp will will just kind of put it on the back burner. The Carabao Cup's coming up as well, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. So that, and I think the Europa League might take a back seat for them. But we'll see what their squad can do and how much they can handle. 